Hi guys, Anthony here from The Hot End. Now the internet is just full of ads. Everywhere you go, any website, any application, well most of the applications on the Play Store and a lot on iOS, um, a lot of ads will just pop up over everything. So whatever website you visit a lot or and just browsing the web generally, you're going to see ads pop up. That's just the way of life these days, but it doesn't have to be. Over on GitHub, there is an application and a project called PyHole, which is a DNS sinkhole that installs onto a Raspberry Pi. So where PyHole comes in, you change your DNS server on your computer or you can set it to be network wide on your router and all of the DNS requests are filtered through your Raspberry Pi. That checks the domain names and the IP addresses in an internal list of um, blacklisted or IP addresses that are known to support ads. And what it'll do is when a request comes up that's going to be to a known ad provider of some kind, PyHole will just say, no, nah, that IP doesn't exist. And then on your website or in the application, there's going to be no ads because it can't resolve. So it thinks that that ad no longer exists. So good thing for us, we can use that to our advantage and I'll show you how. Firstly, you're going to need either a Raspberry Pi or if you actually have a Linux server, a lot of you do, you can install this in Docker. But for this demo, I'm just going to use the Raspberry Pi Model 3B+. Plus. If you've just got a blank Raspberry Pi, you're going to need to put an operating system on there first. Um, I can do a full video on this if you like, but I'll just do a real quick rundown. You're going to need to download Raspbian, Raspbian, Raspbian for your Raspberry Pi. And I would just use the Raspbian Buster Lite. So after we've downloaded the image, we're going to burn that to a micro SD card. And you can do that with a few different programs. I just like Etcher, but you can use Win32 Disk Imager or plenty of others. There'll be other software available for Mac and Linux and you can use whatever you like. Once you've got Raspbian installed on an SD card, you've popped it into your Raspberry Pi and you've set up your network. If you need detailed instructions on how to do all that, just let me know in the comments and I can do a separate video on that, that's fine. Once the Raspberry Pi is on the network, uh, we then need to SSH in and for that I just use PuTTY. Once you first SSH into your Raspberry Pi, we have to switch the user to the root user. SU root. And then by default, there is no password for a Raspberry Pi, um, but you can set one, which I have and no, I won't tell you what it is. Once you've changed users to the root user, we can just paste the curl command off the website, which will trigger off the install process. After you've run that command, you'll be prompted to the install and we just enter through. Okay, um, obviously a pie hole is gonna be a DNS server, so it does need a static IP. And on this case, I am just using Wi-Fi. Now on the requests that come through the PyHole server that it does allow, we need to redirect to an actual real DNS server. So you can use Google, but I prefer OpenDNS. It's uh, your choice. And then the next window is going to show us all of the pre-selected um, block lists. I just leave them all as is and enter through. Uh, IPv4 and IPv6, we want both, enter, and that's going to be the IP address of my server. And remember, it has to be static, and um, I'll tell you why after this. So now we just enter through. Uh, 192.168.8.1 is the gateway of my Google Mesh network, so the real router. Enter through this. Now this step is optional, but I would recommend you leave it on so you can log into the web browser from any of your devices. Uh, so on. Uh, in yes, we need the web server. Otherwise, the web interface is not going to work because there's no web server. We'll log all the queries. Uh, we'll show everything. Okay, so after the GitHub repository has been cloned and the setup installs finished, we need to remember what this password is. Now it's going to tell you what the IP address is of your web interface, but you also need to know this password. Like I said, it's different for every install. 
Once that's finished, we just put the IP address into our address bar, which in this case was 192.168.86.36. Enter. Now this is the web interface for the Pi Hole we just installed. Now to log in, we just press the login button here and there is no um, username, but we do need that password that we wrote down before. So I'll just copy and paste that and log remember me for seven days so I don't need it again and log in. All right, so we're up to 82, 83, 84 queries. They're all starting to flood in now which is good and it's already blocked 13 of those. So if we look into the query log, it's going to show us all of the ads that are coming in, all the all the websites and the queries which are coming in through the device and it's just filtering out all of the garbage. So what's this one here? Uh, adjust.com, bang, blocked. Microsoft, just crap. While I'm in here, I'll just try and remember how to change the password from that random one to whatever we want. But just bear with me a sec. It's just one command once you're in via Telnet. Um, I just can't remember what it is off the top of my head. There we go. Hi hole, hyphen A, minus P, and then we type in our new password. As you can see, the new password's been changed. Now, if we recheck our admin, it's not going to let us in because the password's changed. So, we we'll just type in our new password and log in. Bang. Done. Now, to make sure all of the DNS requests come through the Pi Hole, the new DNS server, just set that up in your router. Tell it to send all DNS requests to your new DNS server instead of your ISP. Um, the ones that it allows, it'll go through to the DNS server we previously set up on the install. Now to test it out, we can just go to some website which we know is notorious for ads like um, speedtest.net, usually just full of ads. And where the ads usually are, all over here, and over here, there's just nothing. They're just not appearing. And as you'll see, most, if not all of the ads, like that looks like an ad placeholder here. It's just blank because the ad has tried to reach a DNS, which we're not letting through. So it's coming back that it doesn't exist. And there's another one, it's coming up blank. So to set your DNS manually on a device instead of doing it via the router, we just go into our network settings, Wi-Fi settings, change adapter options, properties, then under TCP IP v4, we can just put in the IP address of our pie hole. 86. It should be fairly similar in most operating systems, um, but like I said, I've, I've set it at the router level, so it, we don't need to do that here. Uh, if you've got any questions, just let me know and I'll, I'll try and answer them best I can. Uh, I've been running this for a few weeks now and I have noticed a substantial difference. I mean, you can see here, the amount of queries coming through the kids on their iPads, it's already blocked 84. 21, 27.1% uh, of them are all blocked. You can also in here go to your whitelist uh, if you've got a website that's not loading correctly and you need it to. Uh, you can just googles.com or whatever the domain is, put it in here and that will just ignore that one and let it through. Anyway, thanks for bearing with me. Uh, any questions, let me know below. Uh, our Patreon's there if you want to give us a hand on that. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, share it with your buddies. All right, thanks guys.